the first topic we should talk about is you believe that the robot market is going to have explosions of many startups and you think that it's going to copy what happens at EV where many of them will fail because you don't think it's got the profitability and it's yeah. a lot harder than you think. Uh, so, so on the first point, so basically my, 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 my thesis is derived from EVs basically. Um, the, the reason why all these EV companies struggle is because Tesla set such a high bar. Uh, in, in terms of lowering costs, etc., and 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 the point I talked about earlier, it's not about making a good car; it's of making about a good car at, at competitive cost. And and in the and in the robotic space, actually, I have no doubt that figure AI will figure out a good robot, and it probably will do some useful stuff. Can it? But but any good robot is useless in the marketplace if it can't compete on cost. If, for example, Figure I makes a highly capable robot that you can put in all kinds of factories, et cetera, for, let's say, just $50,000. Sounds good, right? Uh, it replaces maybe half a worker. Uh, it, it will easily recoup. It, it's a great investment. But hang on a second. If Tesla sells the, a robot with comparable uh, capabilities for 35000 who is going to buy Figure AI's robot? Not nobody. And this is kind of the situation we, it, it's complicated in order because it's a very emotional, et cetera, buying position. But so it's harder to see, but in robots, it will be, it will be even clearer because in robots, nobody will give a fridge about the brand, the, 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 the paint, the panel gaps. No, it's about the utility the robot provides per unit of, of currency. And, and when you look at Tesla, Tesla's advantages is rooted in, 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 in cost advantage, rooted in deep tech. And if the other guys can't replicate um, all these Tesla uh, sort of um, features, low cost, great tech, they can compete, even though they make a maybe possibly very good product. It's all about cost and, and capability. Mm -hmm. I'll stop you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let CERN reply to that, but I think you're making the assumption that there is a competition between these companies. You know, we're talking about labor, which is 50% of the world's GDP, which is $40 trillion a year. And so could Tesla solve all of that need and then therefore they're competing? Or is there just so big need out there? It's everybody who will have a space to sell. It's who can make it. Like Tesla might make, you know, 2 million next year and 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 100 million, but that's still not enough to address all the need. Uh, let's have CERN um, address what you just said. Yeah, I think AJ is raising some really good points and they're worth thinking about. First of all, I guess I would just, let's just spend a little bit of time comparing the auto industry to what we think the bot industry might look like. So the auto industry, to make a car, you have to build a very big factory. You have to have this massive supply chain behind you. It's very capital intensive, it uses a lot of energy, a lot of people, a lot of mass. Now compare that with a humanoid bot. Tesla Optimus, as far as we know, weighs about 3% of the weight of a Model 3. So to make one robot, you're moving only 3% of the mass around that you are for a car. So Manufacturing complexity should be a lot less for a bot. Yeah, you know, maybe it isn't today, but it should be once companies are making you know a certain quantity of bots, it should be much easier. The other thing too, automobiles are a consumer product. People's taste tastes change, right? So the auto manufacturers constantly have to come up with new models and new designs, and it's it's they're chasing the tail all the time. The humanoid bot, the big challenge is coming up with a design that works, that is functional. And yes, it will improve over time, but probably not because consumer tastes change. In fact, if you want to change the look of your bot, well, put clothes on it. Like That would be an easy solution. You don't have to really change the physicality of the bot that much. So that's another factor I think that's different. Another major one we're thinking about is automobiles are very economically sensitive. When there is a recession, one of the first things that people spend money less money on is cars. They defer that purchase. Now, the likely buyers of humanoid bots, at least for many, many years, are going to be companies. And you know what? When there's a recession, they want to save money. So actually, the demand for humanoids could actually go up 
in a recession. It could be a very counter cyclical product versus, versus a car. And the other thing too, is with the modeling that we've done, you know, automobiles, we know what the margins are in automobiles. And for the most part, they're pretty low. And sometimes for automobile makers, even big ones, the margins go close to zero for a period of time. Again, because of a weak, a weak economy. But for bots, the margins should be a lot higher. And one of the reasons is, again, that when we model out the potential costs of making bots versus the potential revenue, there's actually a very wide margin in there. It's almost like software versus, you know, very low, very low hardware margins in, in cars. But I think, you know, to AJ's point, you know, we don't yet know what this industry will look like because the bot's made up of two parts. There's the physicality of it. There's the actual bot, but then there's the bot brain. There's the AI part. And I don't think we know yet what that part is going to look like. Will there be one company that comes up with the best robot brain and everybody else is behind? Or will the bot industry kind of collectively at the same time kind of like we've seen with large language models, come up with something that's pretty comparable. And I think for me, that's the biggest unanswered question at this point. And then CERN, do you want to talk about the uh, the gross margins? Yeah, uh, you know, I think we're, we're, we're likely on the same page here, AJ. Um, the challenge with automobile makers, and particularly the new EV startups, they have to get to a certain manufacturing production level before their gross margins, you know, turn positive before they have any hope of, of making any money on EVs. There, there's, there's this canyon of losses that they go down and AJ has got a great chart that compares Tesla versus the other EV makers in terms of the, the gross profitability of those companies. I don't think that the bot market is quite as severe as that. Again, it's more like software. It, the, the hurdles are much lower in terms of how much the companies have to produce and sell in order to have some gross profits. Add, yes, that it will be actually instructive to continue to watch the EV market evolve because I think that the software opportunity that we'll see come to fruition as cars can become autonomous will actually be somewhat instructive. That um, at least for vehicles, those companies that were really primarily trying to compete purely on hardware are increasingly going to have a tough time, especially, um, you know, if they're Western companies. I think that if you only want to compete on hardware, then you really should be looking at primarily Asian manufacturers because those are going to be the leaders in low-cost products. That it's, you know, it's almost like an innovator's dilemma where the disruption is primarily bottoms up um, if you're looking at hardware only. Um, but then there is this kind of one-off opportunity for a company like Tesla to start at the high end of a market to kickstart a technology revolution and then come down. And so, you know, most existing companies in the auto market are really kind of in between. They're, if you're looking at a Ford or a GM or, you know, any of the other major legacy auto companies, even internationally, uh, like a Fiat Chrysler or, um, you know, anything Renault out of France, that these companies over time are going to compete with Tesla coming in from the high end of the market and then low cost Chinese competitors coming in from the low end of the market. And there's nowhere for them to retreat. They can't even retreat up market uh, because that area has already been taken by Tesla. And so that really leaves the only area left for them to be able to survive is on software. And none of them have been able to demonstrate any capability whatsoever to produce high quality software to operate their vehicles. Um, and I think that if we see someone coming into the market and providing kind of that Android software solution to the rest of the automotive market that that will be foreshadowing of the types of competitors that might actually have an advantage in the humanoid robot space. That There really has to be a company that is exceptional in software since we've 
you know, CERN pointed out, the majority of the the value to be developed by humanoid robots is primarily going to be soft. Like the the hardware will probably collapse over time to a couple of highly competitive, low cost manufacturers. And then the software will be where the value kind of accrues and you'll have to find, okay, who's the best company at developing high value software that can run off of whatever non-proprietary set of hardware that you know a fully, vert- fully vertically integrated company like Tesla will have. The other thing too, I would just add is that the bot industry is essentially benefiting from the hard work that the EV industry has done, particularly when it comes to batteries. So when Tesla first started, there was no battery supply chain for automobile batteries, right? And that's been built up over the years. Bots are just piggybacking on that. So that's one advantage. The the one area, I guess, where bots is is having to develop their own is in the actuators. And that is becoming the key component right now for the bot. And also right now, it looks like the most expensive part of the bot. And so that's where there's an opportunity, I think, for businesses to operate at scale. And that's where certainly Tesla is likely to have an advantage. IJ, can I ask you this question? I think all of us would agree that there's going to be many, many failures. Many, many of these startups. First of all, we agree that there's an explosion of startups and that many of them will fail. I think where we're probably not agreeing so much is when you said that there should only, there might only be, just like in the EV world, a handful of successful companies. That's, I think, what we're disagreeing on. Is that right, AJ? Um, I, I think I, I haven't fully landed on... So right now, I just... Maybe it's also my ignorance. I, I, right now, I don't see really any credible company uh, emerging. Um, it could very well be that, I don't know, a few years from now, or not even that long, someone like Google pulled some bot out of nowhere because they had some whatever skunk works team working somewhere in, in, in the Nevada desert or whatever. And um, so you never can rule these guys out. Or as we see in the UV space, I mean, we saw these um, smartphone makers like Xiaomi, et cetera, launching trying their vehicles. They are trying to exactly so. And, and you know, you, you never know because it's all has to do with funding, et cetera. I mean, if you fund a company like Riven with <laughs> over 20 billion, they can hire the best people, etc. You can get very quickly to a very good product, but but again, as I said earlier, and, and I, I stand by it, um, it doesn't matter how good your product is. If there's a competing product that is similarly good but costs less, mm-hmm. uh, tough luck. I think that's where we disagree, right? So I think that the market is so big that it doesn't matter. Like let's say that, and I agree. I tell you right now, Tesla is magnitudes better. They're going to manufacture at scale at 10 times more than anybody else, if not even more, faster, earlier, and they're going to have it at lower cost. All that is true. But do you think that that means that uh, five years from now, a factory wants to buy bots, that Tesla will be able to provide that bot for all the need and demand by everybody that wants it? Or do you think no, that maybe, no. they'll, maybe they'll only make $100 million at that point per year and the demand is like a billion? <laughs> You know, I I think uh, um, no, we will see a lot of companies selling bots to companies, but but and uh, but but for a different reason than than the one you I think you just laid mm-hmm. out, and and I would would uh, use one of um, uh, Soren's points earlier, uh, making a bot is in large numbers is much easier than making cars. He pointed out to, to the 3% weight. Um, mm-hmm. when, in a manufacturing context, this is huge because what you can do with, with light, small parts, you can use uh, extremely highly uh, specialized machines with very high throughput, which you cannot use for uh, components with heavy math. Uh, for example, a several hundred uh, kilo c- component, you cannot move with, I don't know, uh, uh, 10 meters per second, but you can easily do it with small components. And anyways, we get too much into the weeds here, but bottom line is you can spool up very quickly a very high volume bot production mm-hmm. if you want. And yes. so, so, but this is a different point. Uh, my, my, my argument is that we will see a lot of bots, but they will still fail 
just as we see a lot of EVs that they're failing in why, because um, there, there will be a lot of companies with a lot of money, Apple, Google, whatever, whoever comes in and, and they will try to compete in this market and they will subsidize these uh, uh, robots just as we see in EV markets. A lot of the large OEMs like like um, in the earlier days, I mean, BMW that, that does better now, but not long ago, um, the uh, BMW's uh, BEV sales, they were totally subsidized uh, uh, by the ICE uh, sales. And, and what I expect is as the companies try to compete later with Tesla in the bot space, they will also subsidize. And for a simple reason, you, you need to have the bots in the field to, to learn so the bots can collect data, real world data, et cetera. And, and also how you deploy the bots and, and you know, all the basics, simple stuff, software update in the field, maintenance, blah, 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 all this stuff you need to learn. And for that, you just need numbers. And, um, and, and for that very reason, the well-funded companies will offer very attractive deals to a lot of companies so they can penetrate the market to a certain degree and collect all this necessary data so so so, so and this is basically the phase we are in right now with a lot of these startups just look at rivian that they're they're losing ungodly amounts of money per vehicle sold and and it's not like they're in, in the third or fourth quarter of ramping they've been ramping for for over two years now and they're, they're, they're still nowhere near of making money um so so you see um and, and there's something similar I totally expect in the bot space. There will be companies who, with huge fundings. They will be selling their bots at, at huge loss, uh, um, so they get some sales. Uh, um, and it, it's 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 going to take um, I don't know how long, but at, at some point, then sort of the hype will, will fade. The funding will get more difficult for the not excessively funded companies. And and, and then we, we will see the problems that we see right now in the EV space. I mean, every few months or quarters, we see an EV company fail, go bankrupt. And um, I, I, I don't think we have seen the last EV bankruptcy and quite the opposite. We are probably just entering that phase um, and, and sort of the same sort of cycle you should think about the things in, in, in my mind in in cycles. We are, we are just at the very early beginning of that bot cycle. Uh, so that's why I don't see any credible company right now except mm -hmm. Tesla because they have the manufacturing pedigree, et cetera, and have done real world AI longer than any other company I am aware of. So, so they just, you know, the best company as far as I can tell. And, and from an investor perspective, and it's my last point and then let other people talk, um people i think that they try to be overly complicated with investing at the end of the day it comes down to identify the future growth industry number one number two identify the winner in that growth uh, 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 industry and you're done